they actually tried divination against his imperial majesty. This is what is so interesting. They tried divination against the king of kings when they attempted and drove him away in the Desita arrest in this bluish green Volkswagen, this Volkswagen Beetle, this Volkswagen Bug. They tried divination, enchantment against the king of kings. Do you understand? Do you understand just who they are? They're the same old ones. The fascists, the Nazis, the Illuminati, the secret societies. They tried divination against the king of kings. And this divination that they tried, it failed. It utterly failed. Now, check this out for a moment. Volkswagen. You see, the Illuminati... Nazi Hitler's people's mobile or mobile, excuse us for the typo right there, or mobler, it's really a mob, or the Volkswagen, that's known better as the Volkswagen or the VW. Now, see, the V is 6 and the W equals 66 or W, or 666. And this is based on Kabbalah, German, Jewish Kabbalah. And this is the symbol. This is the logo right here. As you can see, there's a V and there's a W. But double V is how they say W, which means double V. Now, we go over here and we check the alphabet of biblical Hebrew, or at least the fourth Hebrew of the German and Polish Jews. We see that here at the sixth, Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalef, Hey, and Vav. They call it Vav, but actually it is Wow. But now look at the numerical value. It is 6. So it is V and W. Do you see that clearly right there? It is V and W. So when His Majesty asks them, Is this what you bring for me? In other words, is this what I shall like, go away in? In other words, in this Volkswagen? So they thought that their divination against the king of kings had actually worked. Do you remember, in this time, there were some signs, some dramatic signs. Now, in this book by Kapuczynski, Kapuscinski, called The Emperor, there's a very interesting article, or there's a very interesting chapter, and this is around chapter 133, speaking about the collapse. And let's just share a little portion of it. It says, the whole world stood on its head, my friend, because strange signs appeared in the sky. During these days, coming up to September 11th, September 11th, 1974, there were strange signs in the heavens. Now, Pay attention to this right here and listen to Kapuczynski's book. You understand? And ring the alarm. They tried divination against the king of kings. And the king of kings, because he was silent, because he seemed to go along with them, they thought that divination had really worked against the king of kings. You see, the whole world stood on its head, my friend. Because strange signs appeared in the sky, the moon and Jupiter stopping in the seventh and twelfth houses began, or it says instead of turning in the direction of the triangle, they began ominously to form the figure of a square. This is on page 133 of this book here. Let's bring this over for a moment of this book here, The Emperor, by Richard uh, Kapuscinski, or Kapuscinski, The Emperor. So instead of the rolls, instead of the bends, they tried to humiliate the King of Kings by forcing him to drive away in a Volkswagen Beetle, a Volkswagen Bug, a VW. And the V and W now we know is 666, but what was happening in the sky? 
You understand? What was happening in the sky was that the whole world in 1974 stood on its head because strange signs appeared in the sky, the moon and Jupiter stopping in the what? The seventh, stopping in the seventh, and twelfth houses of the zodiac, instead of turning in the direction of what? The triangle. Instead of turning in the direction of the triangle, what happened? They began ominously to form the figure of a square. Now, accordingly, there were Indians at court who explained the signs at court. They now fled. They fled the palace probably because they were afraid to disturb his venerable majesty with a bad omen. They thought the king of kings did not know. What they say, play fool for catch wise? But Princess Tanyanya Warp must still have had meeting with these Indians, it is said on page 133 because she would run through the palace perturbed, upsetting his august majesty, urging him to order imprisonments and hangings. But his imperial majesty, as we read on, he would do no such thing. It says right here, it says, and the remaining jailers also pressed his noble majesty. They pressed his noble majesty. And... And now what happened? Let's see the next page. What happened? They even begged him on their knees, probably like this woman right here at his imperial majesty's car, to stop the conspirators, to put them behind bars. They were completely dumbfounded, however, completely unable to understand when they saw that his most singular majesty wore his military uniform all the time with the medals jingling and carried his martial baton as if he wanted to show that he still commanded the army, still stood at its head and still gave the orders, no matter that his army had designs against the palace. Well... So it had, but under his command, it was faithful, loyal army, which did everything in the emperor's name. They rebelled? Yes, but they rebelled loyally. This is a little bit from this book right here, The Emperor, by Richard Kapuczynski. But let's just examine this right here concerning this divination this bit of divination that they tried. If you turn to Numbers chapter 23, verse 23, His Imperial Majesty, born on the 23rd day, the head of creation, July 23rd, it says, <laughs> The translation, surely there is no enchantment against Yaakov, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Yaakov, of Jacob, and of Israel, of Israel, what has God wrought? What has Jah wrought? What has Jairoi? Now, let's understand this conspiracy against his imperial majesty and see that his majesty, that old man, that ancient of days, would and still get the final laugh on these conspirators. Both those, as it says, those internal and external conspirators against his Imperial Majesty. Now, what is so interesting is the particular symbol and symbology that they decided. Let's bring this up right here. 
Let's see if we can bring this up. Um, here we go. Let's look at this for a moment. Now you see this right here? This basically explains what we're talking about. As you can see, the VW logo is nice and large. Now this is German Jewish Kabbalistic magic. They attempted divination against the King of Kings. They said the divination, and some might still think it has worked, but it has not. Because not understanding this beetle has another symbology. You have to remember that the Germans and the Jews and other white people have stolen from ancient people, from black peoples, from antiquity, symbols, signs, and then distorting it and using it in what they call so-called black magic or rather sorcery, have attempted divination against his most sublime majesty. And because his majesty did not react the way that they thought he would, they thought that he actually had been overcome by their divination. However, what they did not understand is that the Volkswagen Beetle or bug, it symbolizes another beetle or bug. You understand? But this bug is very important if you will understand the beginning. You see, these conspirators right here with their Illuminati eye tried to go against Kedamawi Haile Selassie and even taking advantage of some celestial signs not overstanding the significance of the crucifixion of the King of Kings nor understanding the resurrection and the transformation that this particular symbol, let's look at this heavenly symbol right here. You see the, the Kepra? The Kepra is cancer. The Kepra is cancer. See, the Son of Man, across from the Son of Man, around Sebek, the Heavenly Father, there is Mercury, or some say Uranus, and then there is the Heaven above. When they saw these signs, they thought that it was their opportunity. But like we said, they didn't understand the significance of this beetle, this so-called bug, Kepra, Kepra, a symbol of transformation. Let us show you, if we will, the last place that the Derg saw Kedamawi Haile Selassie. Now you can see this is the triangle, and this is what they're talking about, the seventh and the twelfth houses. Instead of a triangle, it formed the square. The Indians, seeing that, according to their interpretation, they fled because they did not want to bring this news as though his most sublime highness did not know. Look at this right here. This is the last place that his imperial majesty went to pray before, according to many witnesses, he disappeared. This is Caduceus Estefanos Beta Christian. Now some would say, well, we're just making this up. Well, four priests were shot to death because they did not know the whereabouts of his imperial majesty by the Derg and the Ethiopian soldiers who were guarding him while he went inside to pray. Now we have another revelation. Notice this right here. This is Egyptian magic by Wallace Budge, right? And you see the symbol of Kepra. See, they understood their V and W, but what they really did not understand was the beetle or the Kepra. You understand? And from the root of the Nile is Ethiopia. This is the earliest picture that we saw of his imperial majesty after his transformation. Now, some may question the validity of this picture, but we have thoroughly investigated it. Let's bring you a color picture. Let's show you a color picture and let's enlarge it a little bit so you can see it a little bit clearer. And then we'll show you our comparisons to the last known photos of the King of Kings. Can you see His Majesty's face? Can you see our Caduceus? This is after his disappearance in Caduceus Estefanos Beta Christian. The interesting thing about that name, Estefanos, is that that is Stephen, the martyr Stephen. Do you recall the martyr Stephen? He was the first martyr of Christos, of the Christians. He was the first one, and here 
in front of the Kedus Estefanos, Beta Christian. Let's zoom in. This is what they did to His Majesty, symbolically. But His Majesty outwitted them all. This is why we have this testimony. And this is why we have this proof of Abba Kedus. As you can see, as you can tell, His Imperial Majesty, after the time they alleged that they killed him or that they did this to him or that he's this or that or the next thing, and then they try to bury the man three times and the bones are too big and they don't match any of the very well-known identification marks of his majesty. But this living man, Abba Kedus, Kedus Abatachin, matches that. So you see, there is no divination against Israel. And the stone, which the builders refuse, has become the head of the corner. And prophecy, once again, my brothers and sisters, is fulfilled. Behold, Abu Kedus.